Jillian, welcome to Cat on the Loose. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you coming to the studio. When I uh, got an email from, from you guys and you told me you created something different, that it's not really a dating app, and I am always, always trying to find smarter, easier ways to date, I'm like, okay, I got to talk to this <laughs> chick. So <laughs> let's jump right on it. Can you explain to us what is Clara? Yeah, so Clara for Daters, again, is not a dating app. It's an intentional dating journal okay. and also like a CRM to kind of help you you remain intentional as you're dating. So I'm also single and okay. I'm a dater and <laughs> it's really tricky for me to stay focused on the people that I'm dating and looking at the good qualities about the people when there's just so many distractions in the modern day of dating. A right? lot of quantity, right? A lot of Not quantity. Not a lot of quantity, but a lot of quantity. Exactly. Yes. So, okay, so Clara is not a dating app. So somebody downloads it. It's not a place that you go and you're going to uh, swipe right and left, right and left, right and left. Yeah, you're never going to meet anyone on Clara. It's okay. something that you use to help you. If you're on dating apps, you should have Clara because it's helping you sort through that. Okay, so let's get Clara mm -hmm. so you can talk us step by step and then we'll rewind the story and you tell us how you came up with it. Sure. So I just downloaded it today. So it's called Clara for Daters. Yep. And it's so in the app store. Anybody that is single, anybody that is dating, yeah. anybody that is sick of the dating game, right? Yeah. This, so you download Clara. So the first step is you guys ask for my name. So I said, hi, Kat Zamuto. And I put, you ask for my photo. Mm -hmm. I put a photo there. Then I open it, and you're right. It doesn't start showing me a bunch of guys, which yeah. I like. Okay, <laughs> But it says your prospects. What does that mean? So the people that you're currently talking to are dating. That's, uh. the, that's what prospects are. So for me, I use dating apps to f meet people right, as an introduction yeah. tool, and I used Clara to help organize. So for me, for example, when I open my Clara, you'll see the people that I'm currently talking to are going on dates with, and those uh. are my prospects prospects and they'll be up there because <laughs> I already logged them in. I met them on Hinge or Bumble or Match or whichever dating app that I found them on or I met them maybe you introduced me to someone, <laughs> right? And then I'll I'll put them that way. Uh, okay, so you uh you upload mm -hmm. people that you are me that you met or are, are going to meet or are communicating with from all the dating apps, you upload them on Clara. Yep. I just log it just like you're like I know into fit. Anyone into fitness understands this. It's just like my fitness pal. Uh -huh. Right. You're uploading or logging in what you're eating. This is what you're logging in, who you're spending time <laughs> with. Yeah. So it's just keeping it organized. And then, OK, well, obviously I have a question. How many people are you talking to? Because <laughs> so I can barely handle one, maybe two at the, at, at the same time. But I'm not like I, I, I never talk to a bunch of people at the same time. Yeah. And so everyone's different, right? I yeah. think it's really hard because on the dating apps, like are we actually it's different um, descriptions, right? Are we talking? Are we considering talking to people when we're on the dating apps? Because right now in like my hinge right now, right, you'll see like five guys are talking to me. But I know out of those five guys that are talking to me on Hinge, maybe one or two I'll actually end up going on a date with, right? right. And that's only on Hinge. On Bumble, it's the same amount, right? Uh -huh. So I actually only put the ones that I know that I'm going to go on a date with that I'm excited about. I put those in there. And then it's up to you on how many people you want to actually date at a time. And that's another differentiator that I want to say is so many people are like, oh, yeah, I'm dating. But the reality is they're just talking on dating apps and they're not actually going on not dates. dates. Yeah, I know, because we talked to, like you said, dozens of people mm -hmm. and very, very few translate into an actual date. Exactly. So oh. that's what this is for. This is for the okay. people who translate to dates who are lower <laughs> funnel. And even now, like I was talking to a guy last week and we had plans to go on a date and he ended up ghosting me. Now he's in my app because, oh, I figured we set a time and or whatever. But he ghosted me. We never got to like the actual yeah. date. And so that actually shows another reason or another uh, kind of case study where someone just you, it didn't right. even work out and because I think date. it's the same with the guys and everybody else they're talking to so many people at the same time maybe yeah. they went on a date he went on a date to somebody else before yeah. and they're like oh, I like this girl and then 
That's usually what happens. But okay, so then you upload all your prospects. So what do you do? We should do. Should we do like a screenshot yeah. of the guy? So most of my users just take a screenshot of okay. the photo they like and they upload the picture in there. They put in their name. They put in the age of the guy. Great and this prospect. is for guys and girls. I have male users as well. Okay. Um, and then they, they do the same thing. Take a picture of the guy, put it in, put their name, put in um, where they work, and then also where they met them. So that's what's also interesting for me for the day data, right, is because I know I actually go on most first dates. Um, my best source right now is uh-huh. Hinge. So I know that. Like, That's I, your favorite dating app? It's not my favorite. It's the one that I actually get the most first dates from. Oh, I really? actually get more second and third dates, like less first dates, uh-huh. but more second and third date quality dates uh-huh. on Bumble. But the, mo- but the best for me is honestly referrals from friends and family. But this is all data. <laughs> I love that referral. Yeah, referrals. <laughs> but this is all data that I can actually see now because I I'm, and because I'm tracking it and paying attention. Okay. So uh, you and, and then I'm looking at the Clara app here. It's very interesting. Then it says prospect roaster. So then that's where all your prospects are. Yeah. So you're, it's your roster and it's a kind of a TikTok, but also like, you know, <laughs> yeah, general term that people use. But the reality is these are people that you're dating, right? You're going on a first date, second date with. Uh-huh. Some people get really upset about the term roster dating or rotational dating. And a lot of dating coaches kind of coach this is something to do, right? Yes. So you don't put all your eggs in one yes. basket. Here is where you can actually keep track of your roster. And that's up to you in terms of what those terms look like, right? Because you could be dating three people at the same time. You could be sleeping with all of them. You could be not sleeping with all of them. You could be exclusive. Like, that's up to you to decide that. But the reality is this is where they are. And then once in their roster, there's actually a way to... um, to, to categorize them, your prospect, on how you feel it's going. So like tryouts, it's new and exciting, committed, it's getting serious, or friendlies, just a, you know, you know, have fun kind of situation. And then you can also cut people from your roster. Right. So for me, I'm, I'm actually having no active prospects right now. Everyone that I've been dating or had dates uh-huh. with, they're all in the cut. So I'm like single, single, oh, okay. so working like my leave. Okay, so the cut is, okay, so when you, uh, just for people that are listening to us and you guys can go and, and get the app and see for yourselves. But mm-hmm. So the prospect roster says active, meaning like you just said, people were dating. And by the way, you are completely right. Every single dating expert I've ever interviewed on Can on the Lose, and I've interviewed so many, they all say, keep your options open mm-hmm. until... Both of you decide, okay, this is an exclusive relationship. Mm -hmm. There is no reason to just stop. I've made this mistake before, of course, and I got burned. (laughs) I have too. We all have. Uh, Because I'm, I'm like so much about quality. Like I said, I can't juggle people. It yeah. ju- I, I barely have time to juggle what, my life right now. So when I meet someone, I'm like, okay, I like this person. And I go on date one, date two, yeah. date three. Even if we're still getting to know each other, I'm usually not juggling other dudes. I like completely stop opening the dating apps. I don't talk to anybody else. I kind of focus on my attention on that person to see where it's going to go. But all dating experts, matchmakers, whatever, they say that that's a really bad idea. Yeah. I mean, the assum- the thing is, I'm like you. That's how I used to date, too. But the reality is, in today's day and age, with all the options, you have to assume that the person is talking to other people. Yeah. And for you to get so invested so early on and not <laughs> having a clarity when it comes to what the other person is feeling and how they're approaching yeah. this very early introduction right early funnel if you can think (laughs) of sales like it's still early we haven't even considered like are we going on a test drive yet like that's not even there yet it's still very early so it's important to just try to stay grounded and for me emotionally that was really tough but because I have this app now and I use it it keeps it my mindset non-emotional and more like yeah this is new. I barely know this person. It's still very early and it helps me understand, okay, well, it didn't work out with this guy this week. Like I didn't have a very good date, but I have another date with another guy this next week. And it helps me just kind of stay positive. I love that. And I I, I definitely think it's a great idea because I think especially women, right? When we start dating someone, because I think most of us are dreaming about the fairy tale and we want to find the perfect match. We want to find the soulmate. We get very invested. Oh, for sure. And that's usually how we get burned. I was dating this guy that I met on Bumble uh, for four months. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, we were really into each other's lives. You know, we were totally acting like a couple. Yeah. Uh, he met all my friends. He met my clients. You know, I would would spend weekends at his house. He would spend weekends at my house. We went yeah. on a business trip together. So, I'm thinking, like, I'm not in love with this guy. But, I mean, I'm invested yeah. in this relationship. So, I stopped dating other people out of respect for him. I deleted my dating apps I yeah. deleted Bumble, and I made the stupid mistake of telling him like oh I deleted Bumble and like three months into it I found out he was still on Bumble yeah. because he told me he was like yeah I'm and, and at obviously that day I should have said okay I'm jumping on Bumble myself yeah and I didn't yeah you know so I uh, yeah I agree with you now looking back I would have I, I never would have deleted the dating app so soon I never would have told him yeah. I'm deleting the dating app for you and I maybe I should have kept my options open the same way that as much as everything was fabulous between us you know like to people that match in every way he was still like oh let me see what else is out yeah. there you know yeah. and I should have done the same well and that's the thing like you can't assume anything about what the other person is doing or if you're doing it you assume that they're doing it too right and yeah. that's so hard because yes. we want to assume the best and we want to assume oh this person's as into me as i'm into them and of course they're already deleted i don't even need to have this conversation but the reality is if you're talking to other people and still keeping it light it honestly makes the conversation come up more naturally where you can say like and you'll have the confidence to say because you know you have an option B, C, D. Like you have other people to talk to, right? <laughs> yeah. So when you're actually sitting there and like saying, okay, I, I really want to become exclusive or delete the apps, what do you think? It's easier to have that conversation because if the guy says no, it's like, well, no yeah. big deal. I'm gonna, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna move on. And yeah. otherwise, but because you have all your eggs in one basket, you have that conversation, and the guy says no, then you just feel devastated. Yes. And that's where the emotional, mental health of modern dating is so hard because that's that happens over and over and over again because of the accessibility of meeting new people. And that's where Clara kind of helps because it's putting you in the mindset of what's really occurring and not going to where you think or the potential. It can be. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I think at least what I see with Claire, and I haven't tried it yet. I, I just, yeah. uh, I downloaded the app, but I haven't uploaded anybody yeah. <laughs> yet. But I think it makes it, like you said, more matter of fact. Like, you know, I want to find a partner. I want to be in a relationship, but I'm not going to hurry the process. Exactly. And like you said, you know, okay, I'm really dating this guy. I went on five, six, seven dates with this guy. But maybe if it doesn't work out, I have these other guys that really like me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give them a shot. Yeah. In in the past, like I'm giving this example with this quote unquote boyfriend, because I think four months was a long time. I thought it was disrespectful to do that. Yeah. I was like, if I'm like sleeping with this guy, he's sleeping with me. He's all over my life. He's meeting my friends. You know, I'm meeting his friends. We're taking trips together. I'm still going to talk to other guys. It, you know, I, I like to be very loyal and yeah. very ethical yeah. in, in everything in my life. But obviously the way I date. I kind of thought it was just rude yeah. to be ch like chatting with other people. But apparently, like you said, most people do do it. Yeah. No, it, you can't assume anything. Honestly, I've, I grew up in business. I was a car exec for so many years. And then I was, I, mean, I was very good at that. Legal terms, agreeing to this or that. But going to my dating life, I'm not as good, right? Because I was in a romantic state always with dating on, I'm going to assume the person's not talking to other people because I'm not talking to each other or other people. And the reality is it's not like that. If you actually put on your business mindset, because we do, we go and we look at our agreements, we're making sure of the terms and everything, and we over communicate everything. If there's a line item in an agreement that doesn't that doesn't clearly state what we're comfortable in we're going to get our lawyers on it and like <laughs> let's write something right and that's up to you as a dater to do the same thing that's how you protect your mental health is you get very clear on what terms are because now there's so many like the, people people are so fluid in sexualities and relationship styles and everything you might be in a relationship with a non-monogamous person and you don't know it because you never asked the question yeah right so don't assume assume nothing ask everything and then continue to choose the person as you keep uncovering things are their words aligning with what they're saying then and and or sorry are their words aligned with what they're doing that's how you continue to do your due diligence 
Yeah, I think that's really, really good advice, especially for women, because I think we are we have the tendency of being a little more emotional mm -hmm. in our dating. And I think most guys, I know some guys definitely are looking for a relationship. I know. But I think they're like a diamond in the sand. Yeah. But I really believe most guys on these dating apps And I always use this expression. They're literally ordering girls like DoorDash yeah. because it massages their ego. It's so easy. There's just this quantity there. I've had guy friends say that to me. And even my ex-boyfriend was like, oh, my God, it's so nice to see, like, all these girls that want to go out with me. It's good for my ego. So most people are not there with the right intention. Yeah. So I think if we, we maybe use your approach, this is why I really wanted to talk to you because I think it's a very business oriented approach it, it protects our heart mm -hmm. it, it, I think it might keep us from prematurely suffering if something doesn't work out oh for sure and the reality is I mean there's the next aspect of my app is also to help you find those people yourself so you're not going to see it right now but when you actually go on a date and log the person and then you log the date it asks you some questions after the date right oh, so it says where was where was your date when was your date um, how was your mood before the date right and then it asks you 10 questions and the questions are going to be around Um, determining your relational safety, your physical safety, your emotional safety, your chemistry, and your values. Mm. And I developed this with psychologists, these wow. questions. So it's kind of like a little diary of it, the it date. It is. But these questions are, are really prompts to help you reflect on how that date actually went. So for example, one of the questions would be, was it obvious that he was into you? Yes or no? Did you feel respected? Yes or no? Um, did he ask you questions about yourself? Yes or no? Was he nice to those around you? Yes or no? Was there a quality about him that you found attractive? Yes or no? So you can see when you're asking those questions, they're pretty general questions and they're very specific to determining how you felt in that interaction. Not was he hot or not, right? Not was <laughs> But he... you could ask, did you feel like you have chemistry with him? So that's where was there a quality about your date that you found attractive? Yeah. That's another way to ask about chemistry. Because if you don't have chemistry, chemistry, like for me, if I don't have chemistry that's it I don't want to go on a second date with someone I don't have chemistry with so and that's where it's interesting because chemistry can be very easily um, confused with behavior attraction styles um, attachment styles all of that stuff it can be easily confused and that's been my problem I had a attraction and natural chemistry towards guys that are a bit bad boy kind of considered right and honestly those are the guys that do the best on these dating apps too yeah. the top 10% of all these guys guys they get all the likes all they're the ones who are telling you it's a door dash for me I get everything but there's a good 90% of guys who aren't getting all those likes they are they're you know maybe they're not as cute in their profile pics maybe they're a little bit shorter than what people want maybe they're not having the jobs mm -hmm. and it's our job to learn how to start swiping yes on those guys so that our algorithm shifts so that we can start seeing the 90% of the guys who aren't getting the 10% of likes. But that's what is needed is behavior change. Again, going back to like nutrition, when we eat pizza every day of the week, yeah, it tastes good, tastes good, but then we need to like start deciding in our minds, well, how do we make our brain think that salads taste good, right. right? And that's where reflection comes in. And we're like, actually, I felt really good after this salad. I felt like after this chicken, whatever I was eating, I felt um, I had more energy. I wasn't sleepy. I was all this stuff. And that's what I'm trying to do with Clara is develop <laughs> that same feeling. So after I leave this date where I wasn't like, oh my God, I'm so attracted to him. I can't wait. It was more like I had a really nice time and he really like was obviously into me and I felt good after it. I should go out. I'm curious to get to know him more. So it's a little bit, it's slow. It's a slow burn, especially for women. I love the, the analogy with the food, and I completely <laughs> agree. And yes, most girls, all we, you know, we have, we've done that. We go for the bad boy. I have no idea why. Yeah. But yeah, I think there are a lot of wonderful guys out there, but we don't see them because sometimes their profiles are so shitty. Or yeah. their photos, that's like a big conversation, right? Most guys don't know how to put like a nice photo there. Yeah. Or they don't know how to explain well. So, yeah, I think you need to be, like, a little more open-minded. Mm -hmm. And and that's something that I'm learning because usually I do 500, 1,000 swipes to the left. Wow. Literally. Yeah. That's all, yeah. And every once in a blue moon, I'm like, ah, okay, maybe I'll give this guy a chance. And now 
I'm trying to be a little more open-minded. Like you said, you know, maybe this person is not the person that I think I would go out with, yeah. but you never know. Somebody might surprise you. Yeah. You know, you got to open up your your, your horizons. Yeah. yeah, your minds. Yeah, and I did have that situation. I was dating a guy um, early last year that I met through Hinge, and it was someone that he wasn't necessarily my type. Like, he was cute, but he wasn't necessarily my type. So I was like, okay, I'll go out with him. And I logged the date in Clara, and he scored a 10. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, okay, well, this is something to reflect on. Because I I wasn't necessarily – I was like, should I go on a second date with him? I don't know. And I had set up another date with a guy that was, like, really hot on that I met on Bumble on that later that week. And part of me was like, I just kind of want to see how the really – that date goes. The guy with the really hot guy, let's see how that goes. So I went on the date with the really hot guy did that reflected in Clara he actually scored really low it really? wasn't obvious that he was into me he was rude to the people around <laughs> oh, me no. and I was making excuses deal breakers but, I w- right. yeah. but this is the thing I was making excuses during yeah. the date that would have like let me get, let him get away yeah. with it but because I was asked those questions afterwards it didn't let me get away with it like during the date I was like oh he was rude to them because he was hangry like that's that's oh, okay yeah. right and that's what we no, shouldn't do yeah it's not okay exactly Hence, great idea doing a diet I love that because usually I, I don't think I ever reflected on it. Like I'll go on a date. Yeah. I go home. I'm like, yeah, this is nice. Oh, yeah, this was great. But I don't really, you know, sit down and dissect it and think about it. But that's a really great method to decide, you know, should I go out? on a date yeah. with this person again or not. Well, and it's honestly rediscovering the value of just the social connection, not yeah. the outcome, not like, did I get into a relationship? Because what happens when we go on a bad date, we just get so discouraged because oh, that was another waste of time for all those messages, all those swipes, and I'm still not in a relationship. Instead, the mindset should be, okay, I went on another date, I tried a new restaurant, like I worked the muscles, the social connection muscles, and I'm getting better at dating. And it was in a bad use of time because I learned something about myself and I learned something about what I'm looking for. So it's actually a positive. Again, going back to working out, <laughs> it's like workouts. You can never have a bad workout, right? You I went. Agree. It's a muscle. And this is another thing that I say too. I think most people, this is how they approach a date, right? Like, I want to find my partner. Mm-hmm. And then they get nervous yeah. and then they put so much expectation into it. The way I do it, and I A lot of my girlfriends copy that because it it takes all the pressure away. I'm like, oh, I'm going to meet somebody new. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to be like a law of romantic connection, but maybe it's a great new best friend. Maybe it's a business contact. You know, it can become a client for my business. So the minute I start changing my mindset, like I, I can repurpose that person. I don't just go like, oh, is he the man of my life? Exactly. Because that's what makes people get so nervous because you put so much expectation yeah. towards that date. You yeah, know? no, that's a perfect mindset. Um, honestly, in Clara too, there's a friendlies category. So you can actually put someone in just friends. Yeah, I see here. So active friendlies. Yeah, like if you go on a date with someone yeah. and you're like, oh, I really like this guy, but I want to be friends with him. I don't want to date yeah. him. Then you put them on the friendly category. Yeah, so for me, I have like like five or six guys that I went on dates with this last year who are friendlies. And I keep them there just in case I meet someone that that, that a friend or whatever who's looking for someone similar. And then I can go and I oh. introduce them. Because <laughs> I, like I think that. that's, I mean. It's I, a little backup plan. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a nice guy, yeah. right? It just wasn't my guy. But there's so many single women out there, or, you know, people who are looking. And I can be part of the, I can help part, be part of the problem. I'll be a little matchmaker. Yeah, totally. I do that too. Like yeah. if I meet a guy that's not for me, or even if I meet a guy at an event or something, if I think they match one of my girlfriends and I'm like hey I met this guy I think is good for you yeah it's all positive energy yes just keep putting in the positive that. energy yeah. out there in the world none of this negative yeah. and stuff. by the way yeah if you meet a guy and you don't like him for yourself like I said usually the tendency is okay I never have to see this person again but look at that purpose at that person like can they have a different purpose in my life mm-hmm. like I said maybe you have common interest and he can become one of your best friends yeah or whatever your business is maybe your businesses have synergy it has happened to me so many times that I still have people in my life that I went on dates with but I never really dated yeah and we became like best friends or whatever we did business together or something and that's still like that's a powerful connection and with the world that we're in with loneliness epidemic and social isolation it's important to see those as wins as well because that's part of human flourishing 
right? Even though it's not a romantic social connection, that's a very meaningful social connection for you and it made you feel good. And that's something to be applauding about as well. Yeah, I agree. And then you have something here called Clara Card. Mm -hmm. What's that? So I don't, there's no meeting anyone on Clara. However, I did hear a lot from my users how, you know, we want to have our friends help us and like let our friends introduce here or there. So what you can do here is you can actually fill out a bio and then it's just, it's like your own personal website for your link. You can turn it on and off and you have basically a text that you can send to your friends and say, hey, if you meet any guy out there, um, this is, please send this to them and they'll, they can, they can talk to me, either email me or hit me up on Instagram or whatever to go that way. That's really cool. So you can do like, yeah, basic information about yourself, where you live, your occupation, education, religious beliefs, children, la, 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 and you can send your friend the link. The link, yeah, Yeah, and then they can keep it. I I have my friends keep it saved under my contacts, Uh especially because I have so many friends that are married, and I'm like, I know you know some single people. (laughs) And I said, just save my card there, and I said, next time you're out, because they're always like, oh, it's so awkward. I don't know how to introduce you, and I'm like, I'm telling you. Here, here is a tool. All you have to do is go to my name in your phone, click the link, and send the link to the guy, and if the guy's interested, he'll reach out yeah. to me. And if he's not, if he's read something like, oh, she wants kids, I don't want kids, then that's fine. Then it's done, totally. right? They don't have yeah. to do anything. It's very low effort for my friends. I love that because usually, yeah, if you give somebody's number, oh, you're really going to like to meet Catherine. Yeah. And they don't know anything about Catherine. They don't know what, what I look like. They don't know what I do. It's hard for them to decide if it's a yes or no. But if you click on a link and you see the basics of the person, you yeah. know, yeah. Then I love like, that yeah, idea. Maybe. Yeah. I will definitely fill out mine. How did you come up with this idea? Because you were in the car industry, (laughs) correct? That's like a major shift. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I was a car exec for a good eight years and grew up in it, loved it, and was thriving in it. Um, But I was also very much a late bloomer when it came to dating. So, like, when I was young, I was always an A student, got into a great university, came back and did really well in my career. Um, and I didn't really start dating until, like, mid to late 20s. So, oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And I never – so that going back to my exercise, like, analogy is I never worked those muscles. I never learned what heartbreak looks like, what red flags are, what anxiety feels like versus chemistry. I never learned any of that stuff. Um, so then I started dating when I was later and I ended up meeting someone that I fell in love with, right? Completely fell in love with, was super excited, um, had every intention of getting married to this person. He had already bought a ring. Wow. Um, we Where'd were, you meet? We were doing, yeah. We were doing premarital counseling. Um, like we were on the path. Like it was, it was exciting. And I, my career was doing well. Then COVID hit and I was home more. Um, and I was home one day getting ready and I found out, um, like through God and fate and whatever that he had actually been cheating on me the whole time Are of our you relationship. Are serious? Yep. The whole aye, aye, aye. That's time. That's awful. Yeah. Ouch. So why in the world would he propose? You know, he had every intention of continuing <sighs> this double life. I mean, he, <gasps> and with me, he was like, he was looking better because I'm a big exercise person. We work out together. We were running during COVID. Um, like I was, I was such an added value to his life. Like we can see that we were both flourishing and mm-hmm. he was thriving in his work as well, oh but he God. wanted to keep this double life of just secrecy. And I found out and I, you know, left that day, thank God. But, um, then I was like, okay, after this happened, I was just in a fear mode. I was just so terrified. And for me, I still want to get married and have kids. Like that's very important to me. But I didn't know how in the world I was going to be able to do this again because I was so scared that I would make a bad decision again because I was like, I, I didn't trust myself. You know how yeah, you have it of course. like maybe if you if you ever had it in business where you hire someone and it's just a bad hire and then you, you get fearful of hiring someone again. Like it's just you just. Yeah, of course. Lose Listen, all being cheated on is absolutely. It has happened to me. I think it has happens to so many people and it's just awful. Yeah, it's debilitating. It's hard to like you said, you think like how. How am I going to trust the next person? Yeah. But I guess the only thing I can say is you cannot let one asshole like this guy ruin for, you know, the next one that really deserves you. Yeah. So that's how you got to move forward. But I know it's very painful. It is. And for me, I'm very much an accountability person. Right. Because like he did that. That was his action. And it was 100 percent wrong. 
but what can I do to improve myself so that I don't allow myself to get into that situation again? I'm very much because that the only way that I can control <laughs> things for me is if I was going to take a step into an action. And for me, that action was learning how to date. Well, how do you learn how to date? <laughs> the only way to learn how to date is honestly through if experience. If you can teach me, I'm, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> yeah. And that's I have not learned <laughs> <laughs> anything I've learned like I know t- well I be- because of the podcast right because I've been doing for four almost four years now I learn what I don't want yeah you know like things like that I'm pickier yeah I definitely learn there are certain behaviors that are absolutely something we should never accept but I still think the dating game is such a tough shit show <laughs> it is it's very tough and it's hard to stay consistent yeah but I think as soon as you realize that the efforts that you put in are worth it, again, just like the gym, right? Like it's hard. You have to stay consistent. There's no giving up. There's no stopping going to the gym. It's a lifelong commitment to working these muscles. And that's the same as dating or just having meaningful social connections, right? Because I interchange them. I think that dating is a meaningful social connection. For sure. And meaningful social connections is dating. Like you should always be thinking in that direction. Um, But yeah, after the breakup, I was just terrified and I read all the books. I was like, okay, I'm going to learn how to date, right? So I read all the books. I listened to podcasts. (laughs) I was talking to dating coaches. I'm like, I'm going to learn. But just like school, right? Or like even if you're starting a new diet, you can read everything, but then you actually have to do it. Yes. And the doing it. You have to practice. You have to actually practice it consistently and over a long period of time. And that's what I struggled with because I was like, okay, after the first date, I'm like, oh, wait, the dating coach said I have to ask my questions. So I was like, where, where's that Instagram post with those questions? Or like, <laughs> wait, was, what am I supposed to do? So I'm trying to figure it out as I go along. But then the reality is if it was a really cute guy, then I'm like, oh, I don't need to look at it this time. Like, doesn't matter. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm doing it again. I need to, I need to get intentional again. So then I started writing in a journal. I was like, okay, what if I like in a journal, just really am like honest to myself. But then I have this problem of, I'm a very like optimistic person. Same. And I tend to only <laughs> write down the good things things yeah, when I'm, I'm doing same. journaling. I'm like, oh, he, like I just completely ignore the bad things and don't write it down. So then that was my second problem. I was like, all right, well, that's not honest. So then how do I do a third? So then I came up with Clara. I was like, what if they ask me yes or no questions and they're only yes or no, I can never put maybe. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that'll keep me honest, right? That'll that'll make it to do. And I was like, all right, that makes sense. And then I started doing it in journaling, but then my handwriting sucks. So then I was like, well, what if I actually turn it into an app? And then I had a friend who was a web designer and he's also like a gamer. So I was like, it would be fun to like make it a little bit more interesting. So it's a bit more gamified. Um, and then we put some designs together and that's how Clara became a thing. Like, And what's the name Clara? How did you pick that? What does so that mean? Clara is actually my mother's middle name and uh. it's my great grandmother's name. And in Spanish, claro, clarity. And I really want everyone to have clarity when they're choosing their partner. My grandmother, who is 80. 83 years old, been married to my grandfather since they were 19. Um, and oh, wow, that's nice. That's so rare these yeah, days. Yeah, they were 19. <laughs> I have their picture, their wedding picture in my home. And she told me the biggest investment you'll ever make in your life is your partner. Biggest investment. And it's interesting to me because, honestly, you know, the big investments in terms of, like, uh, actual things is a house and then a car. And I was in the car <laughs> business, right? And the amount of due diligence we do when we're purchasing a vehicle or purchasing a house is a ton. Yet, if, if what grandma says is true and the biggest investment is in the partner that we choose, why aren't we doing some of this due diligence? Why are we letting chemistry be the driver? If I was to be chemistry the driver of some of these beautiful homes and then I never get the home inspection report, yeah. I probably get really screwed, you know? That is so true. Well, <laughs> I think chemistry is part of the package. Yeah. But I think what you said, we need to do our due diligence. So many people just choose the partners in a hurry mm-hmm. because they want, like you said, maybe get married, maybe have kids, or maybe just they don't want to be alone yeah I literally have girlfriends that say that they're not a hundred percent happy within their relationships they're like oh I don't want to be alone or we talk about I think you need to be super happy alone yeah. love your life have your interests and then you find a partner that is going to complement all of that but I agree with your grandma I think it's probably 
the most or one of the top three most important decisions we make in our lives and we shouldn't just settle. Yeah. Yeah. The settling can't the be it. It has, it has to be something that optimizes your yeah. life. It shouldn't take away from your life. It sh- life but it should be an optim- optimization. But it's tricky because I have a lot of friends who are like, OK, well, I just rather be alone. But then I press, I push back because I'm like, I hear you. I hear that it's scary. I hear that it can be a detriment to choose the wrong people. But the reality is we know as humans that social connection is extremely important. And we know that these meaningful connections are necessary, necessary in order to have a, a fulfilled human life. Now, it doesn't have to be romantic. Um, it could be other connections. But the reality is if you're not making these connections, then you're going to experience social atrophy. You're oh, going to yeah. experience loneliness. And from loneliness comes depression, health issues like the Surgeon General just put out a report last year. And it talks about all the health um, repercussions that occur when someone is so lo- lonely and social is- socially isolated. And listen, I don't think anybody should say I'd rather be alone. I think like searching for love and mm-hmm. seeking love is such a beautiful, fun part of life. Yeah. And when I see girls talking about that, I just want to be alone because I had my heart broken. I'm like, OK, so you let the person that broke your heart like win the game yeah. and you're going to be alone. No, go for it. You yeah. know, pick up the pieces. We've all been through heartbreak. Yeah. And I think the right person doesn't break hearts. I'm a firm believer that, you know, there are a bunch of songs that say love hurts. And I think yeah. it's the opposite. Yeah. I think real love doesn't hurt. Yes. Real when you feel calm and happy and, and safe and you don't have to guess, right? Are they going to call me this weekend? Are they not going to call me this weekend? Do they want to be with me? When, yeah. when all of this answer, these questions are answered, you know you have the right person. So you got to put yourself out there. Yeah. Dude, I mean... I completely agree. You have to leave your heart open. And that's hard to hear, especially for people like you and me and most people out there who have been hurt. Oh, yeah. And I that, think that's the majority, and, right? And that's hard. So yeah. that's where I'm trying to empower daters with Clara, because using Clara, you should be able to de-risk the situation of heartbreak, right? <laughs> We're literally de-risking that fact, because early on, yeah. if you're able to stay you know, present early on, pick up red flags. Because honestly, if I was using Clara with my before when I met my ex, I would have picked up on situations early on that I was uncomfortable with already. Like there was a circumstance when we were in a different country and he drank too much and I felt not safe. Mm -hmm. And that should have been something that I should have paid more attention to. And I didn't. Um, Situations where I was out and I saw him flirting and I would call him out on it. But I but it wasn't enough for me to say something like this was not okay, Right. And I think that's where we're trying to if if we're intentional, if we're the smart people we are, we yes, we can have open hearts and we can be very loving and everything. But if we can try to de-risk the situation, you being very intentional, then that's 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 how. Yeah, we, we I kind think of it sounds forward. like a great idea because, like I said, you know, we have a million apps on our phones. So if I open Clara and I have Prospect One, Prospect Two, Prospect Three. And maybe the details we would forget about, oh, like yeah. like you said, minor behaviors or minor red flags that yeah. we tend to ignore. But if I open the diary and I look at everything, at least I have the whole history of what's going on in front of mm-hmm. me. And uh, and I, in my mind, it clarifies like so I can make a, a more educated decision exactly. if you should see that person again or not. Now, it could happen that you put a prospect there, like you said, oh, I went on a date and it was a 10 and then the guy doesn't doesn't call you for a second date or he ghosts you or something, then what? Well, then you can add a note. So I was seeing a guy maybe like six months ago that I kept going out on dates with and I was feeling chemistry. I felt like a 10 every time. Um, but then his communication on the texting started getting a little erratic. And instead of like hyper fixating on it, because usually I would be like, oh, like texting him like, hey, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. I started journaling in Clara because there's a note section. And I said, I noticed his communication is kind of off today. Right. It's something's up. And then I would do the next day. And then I was like, OK, he changed our date for tonight. Something's off. Uh-huh. But because so now. When I actually, when he actually said something, he said, you know what, I, I, I reconnected with my ex and I'm doing that. It, I wasn't blindsided because I had all these notes leading up to it that emotionally I was like, oh, well, I kind of called that. Like it was almost like a, oh, that makes sense, right? I wasn't, yeah. I was being reflective and I could see that it was coming and it didn't hurt so I much. I love that. Because I saw it coming. Yeah. yeah. And people don't need to pay 
to use it, correct? No, it's free. This is a free tool. My goal is to eventually... No catches. No catches. Download, no so, anything. And you go to the App Store and it's called Clara for Daters. Yes, Clara for Daters. So guys, if you're listening, yeah, I tried out. I downloaded it this morning on my way from a business trip and I was like, yeah, this seems like fun. I want to understand how it works, but I think it's a gr- I love journaling. I love putting my ideas on paper. And I think maybe this brings a little more clarity. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Hence the word Clara to uh, the dating game. I think so. but guys can use it as well, right? Oh yeah, no, we have actually a lot of guys who use it. How many users do you have now? We have over a thousand oh, and then wow. up the over When did you launch? February of last year. Oh wow, congratulations. Thank you. It's been fun, but even with that I'm, they're very great users. They're, I have like more than 3,000 dates logged. So people are literally logging at least two uh-huh. dates a month. They're being very intentional. They're trying to pick up tr- you know, different ways to, to really make the app meaningful to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm seeing I have users come back to me and say, you know, I was in a situationship for four months. I started logging my dates on Clara, and I realized how bad I felt after every date. And that gave me the courage, seeing it in, pa- in, like, you know, in the app, seeing that that I felt so bad gave me the courage to break up with the situation, Chip. I love that. I think it's just such a good way to to take notes so we remember what's going on and date smarter. Yes, yes. Congratulations. Thank now, you. before I let you go, mm-hmm. um, we all use dating apps, and you said you use Bumble, you use Hinge. I have to ask your opinion since you created Clara. Do you have one that is favorite? Do you have one that that you use more or less or do you only use Bumble or and Hinge? Do you use other ones? I've used a bunch of different ones. I've used Bumble, Hinge, Tinder, and Upward, which is a Christian-based one. Um, and I've tried different ones. The reality is it's where you feel like you can be consistent. So if you can spend 15 minutes a day on Hinge or Bumble, whichever ones user experience-wise, you can be consistent. The same people are on all the different apps. That's the reality. Uh, yeah, I have matched with the same guy like in two different apps yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. so they're, they're everywhere. Almost everybody's everywhere. They're on, they're on every one <laughs> app. So just pick like two yeah. or three. And if you can be consistent on it, whichever one you have the best user experience on. And that's the thing why I, I, have, I have a problem with the day naps with is because all they're doing is optimizing for the user experience and not necessarily looking at the data experience. And that's where Clara tries to bridge that gap because I'm not interested in the match process. That's mm-hmm. that's already been done a million times from all these different dating apps. I'm interested in how you actually do your due diligence process yeah. after. I love that. This is more like individual. Mm-hmm. It's like for me, Catherine, for you, Jillian, to go there and look at how it's going, the people that you want to cut off, mm-hmm. the people that you want to give a second chance. Yeah. And I think for in, in our case, for us girls, if we like a guy and we say, oh, this date was a 10, we, we, we sit down and wait and hope that he agrees and, and invites us on a second date. Right? <laughs> How do you feel about girls inviting a guy out on a date? I'm uh, super old fashioned. I don't do that. <laughs> I am too. I really like it when a guy like right after the date even says, I really liked you. I would love to like open your calendar and get a second date on. Yeah. That is like so attractive to me. Yeah. Um, but the reality is I had another date uh, maybe a couple weeks ago where he did score a 10 and I wasn't necessarily feel- feeling the chemistry attraction. And he never, he was fishing to see if I would say yes, if I would ask him out again. And that felt. If you would ask him out? Or no, sorry. If he would ask. Oh, if, okay. if I would say yes to oh, him. He okay. was fishing to see if I would say uh, yes. And I hate that. Yeah, me too. It's not attractive. If you want to invite me on a date, invite me on a date. Like yeah. Plan a date, you know, be proactive. Yeah. But there's some women who are okay with that. Like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll reassure him and then he can ask me out. Yeah, I'm not that no, girl. Me neither. And that's, that's just a different chemistry type. So it yeah. ended up, I ended up not going on another date with him because I just didn't find yeah. that amount of fishing attractive. And then you, you delete, like you toss the. the I put him in cut. Cut. So yeah, this cut. is the other important thing is because they're all in cut so I had another guy reach out to me on Monday that I was seeing maybe like four or five months ago and we had been on a couple dates and we ended up just not feeling the chemistry it was mutual and then he pulled back up he said hey I just saw you on Bumble and was thinking about you how have you been now 
I looked back on my cut and I saw all the dates that I went on him. I saw the reasons why. Oh, so they can the cut stays there yeah, for reference. It's a record. Oh, so then that. I saw all the reasons why I, I cut him and it reminded me instead of because part of me was like, well, maybe I should give it a second shot. Right. But then I read through all the notes and I was like, no, this was good. And I left it there. Like I was like, I don't need to reengage in this. There was a reason. I can see all my notes from oh a couple months God. ago. So I absolutely love that because every once in a blue moon, some guy texts me like j- just happened two days ago this guy texts me like, hi this is Peter do you remember me we were talking like two years ago and we and yeah. I'm like no I don't remember <laughs> so then he sends me all this picture and everything I'm like yeah I think I've seen your picture but I don't know but then I was like I'm sure there's a reason why we didn't go on a date mm-hmm. but I can't remember the reason yep. so if I had put it on Clara that yep. would be really cool because I can go there wait let me check my <laughs> date reference yeah <laughs> That's what I do. Let me see if you're cataloged. <laughs> yeah, no, it's there. And then you can see what your mind was back then. Yeah. You can see if there was any any unanswered questions. I love that yeah. idea. It, see, it works there really you well go. for me. <laughs> it, 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 and I need it too because like, my phone is like a, such chaos of contacts. Like yeah. a, a, a Brian, for example. I think I have like two dozen Brians there like yeah. between business and dudes I talk to, people I would have dated. Made an, so if like some Brian texts me, I'm like, I don't know who you are. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> So this is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Congratulations. Thank you. Amazing job. It's such a pleasure having yeah, you here on Canada no, thank Loose. You for having me. And uh, much success. And I really think you guys should download it. I'm going to give it a whirl. Well, and I'd love to get your feedback because that's I what promise. I'm like a data advocate. I'm so passionate about my yes. users and I love feedback. So no, please. one million percent. I, so far, I love the idea <laughs> yeah. and I'm game. And now that I understand it even better, I'm actually excited. I haven't been dating much because I don't have time. Yeah. Like I said, I don't usually juggle people. Usually it's one maybe but I promise I'll give it a try and and I'll come back but I think you guys yeah I'm gonna get my my Clara organized this weekend good thank you it was such a pleasure having you guys be safe out there always self-love first and foremost and I'll see you very soon thank you Julia thank you congratulations thank you